Hello everyone, Brother Wayne here from Alabama. This channel is all about world news and correlating those world events into biblical prophecy. Here we break down the daily news headlines and their impact that they have on biblical prophecy. So let's begin. Today I really want to start out in the book of Proverbs and one verse here just kind of for the verse of the day before we get started. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Now I can say that this personally is one of my favorite verses of the Bible and this is all going to kind of really make sense as we really start talking about these current events here because um, a lot of things are going on right now and I really want to bring some clarity to you today. So starting in verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. You know, how many times in life do we need wisdom? Sometimes we're talking about maybe a career change, maybe adding on to the family, or maybe even dealing with just the daily stresses of life, and we need the wisdom, the godly wisdom, to really know what to do. You know, there never can be a time in which we can separate wisdom out of a decision that we make. Now let me say that again in just another way here. Everything you do, get wisdom, and get understanding. You know, wisdom is the principal thing. God tells us in, the, in his word that when we need wisdom, ask for it. How many of us ask for wisdom on a daily basis? How many of us ask for wisdom in each and everything that we do? Maybe, you know, now we start talking about the deception of the end times. Praying for daily wisdom can help you, can help me, can help each and every one of us. So I would strongly encourage you that when you look at these news headlines, when you look at the decisions you're faced with in life, when you look at what you're coming up against now, presently, and into the future, seek the wisdom for God. You know, even in the book of James, James clearly says, those who seek wisdom ask for it. Pray daily for wisdom in each and everything that you do and that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven and watch God give you that wisdom if truly in your mind and in your heart you believe that he will. So let's jump into the news headlines today. A uh, very special day today. Uh, first we'll start out with the earthquakes. You know we've been talking a lot here on this channel about the earthquakes and monitoring them coming up on the daily uh, news report, but also on the star, the grand conjunction, as you will, between uh, Saturn and Jupiter aligning in the sky. But let's look at the earthquakes first, and then we'll talk a little bit about this real grand conjunction. You notice here we've got a 5.7 just happened in, in uh, Wallace and Futina, uh, 10 kilometers deep, 5.7, very, very strong earthquake. 4.5 in Ecuador, 4.8 in Indonesia, 4.7 in Alaska. Those are very concerning, especially for our West Coast people in California, in Oregon, uh, you know, Sacramento, all the way down the West Coast there. Uh, anytime you see those 4.7s, those 4.6s uh, up to the 5 range, and it kind of goes around the ring of fire, It is the energy is going to go across the, the fault line and down into the West Coast. Be looking on the West Coast now, I'd say within the next 24 hours uh, for, you know, um, earthquakes a little bit smaller than that, but as you can see, the energy just goes around. Uh, 5.0 Fiji Islands, 4.9 Tonga, 4.9 Chile, 4.5, um, let's see, that was in Russia. Uh, we see the 4.5 in Russia, and uh, then we see a 5.3 here in uh, Puerto Villa, Vanuatu, and you know we're seeing a lot of earthquakes. Right now there's 40 earthquakes greater than 2.5 or greater uh, right now in the last 24 hours. But as you can see, if you look at, at the map, uh, and, I'm, and I use USGS.gov latest earthquakes here as my resource, uh, to share with you, you can see the earthquakes are spread out across the globe. Uh, they, they, they really are. So that's very something to kind of keep con be concerning. I know that over the weekend, there was a 6.3 in Japan. We're on the lookout for even uh, maybe a greater earthquake than that today as the magnetic fields of these pl planets align. Uh, but, you know, let's, let's talk about earthquakes a little bit. I will give you just a statistic I found here from the Israel 365 uh, it's just one of the resources that had it, but it's something that's very, very important. Is there's been up to 
50,000 earthquakes in Antarctica in the last three months. Think about that, 50,000 earthquakes. Is this a sign? There will be earthquakes in diverse places. 50,000 earthquakes, something is going on, right? I think we can agree that that just doesn't sound right. That just, that sounds abnormal. It's like the Lord is trying to tell us we are in the end of days. But do you see it in the media? No. Do you see any media reporting it? No. That's why we report it here because you have to get unbiased news somewhere and know that somebody's going to tell you the truth. So now let's talk about the Grand Conjunction a little bit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking here at Israeli 365 news and um, on the night of December 21st, you've got Saturn and Jupiter here that are going to align, which is tonight. So they're actually not going to be very close together, but are actually will be, as a reported, close to 450 million miles away apart. But they kind of come to this conjunction once every almost 19 and a half years. So you can see that this is kind of, uh, you know, it's a very important part here. You know, in the end times, as we looked last week, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. This would be equivalent, equivalent to the stars, you know, up, up in the heavens, up, up where you can see the stars and see the planets align. Um, you know, one of the things I thought that was kind of interesting when I was going through some research on this, just to share with you, is that the previous sighting of Jupiter and Saturn converging uh, was in the year 1226. And, and remember, I, I mentioned it last, last time, it was March 4th, 1226. That was when uh, Genghis Khan was conquering Asia. So I, I thought that that was kind of interesting. But note that this is not expected to occur again until March 15th, 2080. So you can see this is something that's very, very important. And, you know, now I'm starting to see more of the biblical aspect of this sign in the heavens tonight. Uh, what I'm really starting to see is that they're saying that this is the coming precursor to the return of Jesus. And, and when you started talking about, you know, people that are... In, of a non-Messianic faith in which they're looking for the Messiah to appear the first time. Now, now here on this channel, this channel is all about Jesus's return. We know he's coming, and when he raptures the church, I'm gone, and I'm, I'm, I'm going with him, and so then, you know, possibly even the internet could be disconnected, and we'll talk a little bit about that and where I get that from a little bit later, but you'll see that more people are starting to say, this is a special occurrence. Now, we're not saying and putting a timeline on Jesus returning and rapturing his church today or tonight or anything like that. But what we are saying is that it's very important for us to focus on because this is just another sign. You know, how many times do we pray for God to send us a sign when he's already sent us 15 signs? How many times do we pray and say, God, if you just show me this is the right decision for me to make, but yet he's already put the thoughts in your head, he's already brought the friends to you to talk to you about it, he's already kind of maybe given you a couple of dreams about it, he's already made you feel comfortable with making the decision, but yet we still in our human nature say, God, can you give me a sign? God, can you just really show me that it's you and that it's really you talking? And then once again, we have to go back to, we have to get that wisdom from the Lord. We have to know that it truly is from the Lord. And, and one of the quotes here uh, in Israeli 365, I thought that it's from a guy, his name is Rabbi Berger, uh, Berger. but I'm not really uh, familiar with Rabbi Berger at the moment. Uh, but I will say that his quote here just kind of, you know, it just jumps out at you. It says, searching the stars for signs can lead a person to wisdom but it also can lead people astray. Hmm. Searching the signs can lead a person to wisdom. Well, here when we talk about wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom comes from the Lord. Wisdom does not come from astrology. Wisdom does not come from meteorology. Wisdom does not come from your cousin, sister's, sister's neighbor's dog. It comes from God. And, and now God can use his wisdom and deliver it through multiple people in our lives. You know, how many times, you know, when you think about a stranger walking up to somebody and says, God told me to give you this $80. And that stranger says, 
I, I, I don't know how this is happening, but but today the power bill came due and it, I was $80 short and I didn't know what I was going to do and the power was going to get turned off for me and my family and my four kids. And God gave wisdom to that giver. But then God also gave the wisdom to the, re, the recipient of that to acknowledge and know that it was from God. So really think about that example there. Um, you know, and then kind of moving forward on... Uh, Israel 365, one of the signs of the end times, you're going to start really seeing a lot about the third temple. We've talked a lot about that here in that you're going to see more and more. And I'm going to tell you this, you're going to really see more and more, but it's really going to become amplified now in the next few months. Um, and this is from Israeli 365. With Netanyahu's approval, Levite announces on Temple Mount, get, get ready for it, we're getting closer to third temple. Think about that. Levite, we're getting close. Hmm. It's something that's very, very important. Uh, and, you know, the third temple is coming. And when you start seeing articles about it, when you start seeing people that are saying it's coming, guess what? It is coming. Now, this will be the temple that the Antichrist will come in in the midpoint of the tribulation period and declare that he is God. It will be an abomination. Okay? It will be as destructive and it will cause divisiveness. You know, people just think now we have controversy and divisiveness and, and, and hate in the world, which we do. But when the Antichrist comes into the temple and declares that he is God, it's all going to be amplified. It's all going to create a stir in which there will be Jewish people that are in the land of Israel that will leave and flee to the mountains because destruction is coming. There will be people that will not go back inside their homes to get anything and they will leave and flee because they know parts of the New Testament. Now, when they get to those mountains, let me tell you something. There are going to be Bibles waiting on them there that are going to actually describe and show them that they are in Revelation. They are in the end times. And our brother in Christ has already prepared that for them right now. God gave that brother the wisdom to go ahead and have Bibles hidden in the mountains. So, when you start talking about this and you start seeing the signs, there are signs all around us. Are you ready? Let me just ask you, are you ready? Let's, let's move on. You know, one of the things that's very, very important kind of in the end times is that when the false messiah comes onto the scene, and which is the Antichrist, you know, there are going to be things that are going to appear that are not going to be so. And, you know, kind of as the devil and all his minions, as I put it, use these tactics to try to confuse and create deception in the end times, God will also show his wonder, right? That's, that's why we have the, the 120,000, um, let's, let's call them uh, almost preachers of the word during the tribulation period that, are, that you have or 144,000, excuse me, 12,000 each from the tri tribes of Israel declaring the word. That's why you have angels going across the globe preaching the gospel, telling every people, woe for the time is at hand, repent. And that's why you also have the two witnesses that are going to come onto the scene in the tribulation period wearing sackcloth, but capable of breathing fire out of their mouths and causing plagues and destruction upon the earth because people will not repent. If you don't believe me, it's right here. It's in the Word. It's in the Word of Jesus Christ. It is coming. It is coming upon the face of the earth. And let me just share with you what, what has been revealed now. This was in uh, uh, jpost.com. The ritual bath from the time of Jesus was found at Gethsemane in Jerusalem. This is located at the foot of the Mount of Olives. Uh, this, is, this is one of... Uh, the sites of Christianity's uh, most important churches uh, over throughout history, right? And when you look at this, the Antiquities Authority 
unearth a 2,000 year old ritual bath. Think about this. Um, this is unbelievable. You know, truth springs eternal from the earth. You know, the Lord even tells us that the truth shall be revealed. Uh, you know, and when you look at this and you see that this is going on, you know, um, it, it's remarkable. You know, back in Luke uh, 22, verse 39, Jesus came and he prayed on the Mount of Olives, right? He, he prayed there the night before his crucifixion. And, you know, you can read about his crucifixion in Matthew 26. But when he went and prayed, you know, he... He, he prayed in which he was actually sweating blood or, or blood was coming through his skin. I, you know, uh, one of the things I've always found that was amazing during that passage in the Bible is that the Lord says that uh, in his word that when Jesus prayed, he said, Father, um, take thy cup from me, but if it is your will, uh, then not, then don't take the cup from me. And you know, Jesus, I'm sure, went through a variety of emotions knowing that what was about to happen, knowing that the crucifixion was about to happen, knowing that he was about to go through uh, one of the most horrific deaths that you can imagine, that he was going to suffer for mankind and actually bear the weight of all the sins of mankind, all the sins of for you and for me uh, that we ever would commit. And it's, and it's very humbling. It's very humbling that one person, one man, the true God, came in human form to do that for us. It's very, it's very, very humbling. It's very, very um, just you can't express the thankfulness that we have because of him. You really can't. So now kind of moving in, into Heretz, you know, one of the things I mentioned last week was that Israel was faced with a possibility of a fourth election. And we talked about a little bit about Rabbi Kaduri, and which was the extra biblical prophecy that really kind of set the stage, even when Rabbi Kaduri uh, had a dream in which Jesus revealed himself as the Messiah to Rabbi Kaduri in his dream, and that envelope containing his name, Yeshua, was actually opened one year upon his death. But And, and he also talked about, Rabbi Kaduri talked about, as a sign of the end times, Israel would have elections but form no government. And he actually said the two parties during this election time would be from the tribe of Benjamin. You know, so right now we have Benny Gantz, Benjamin Gantz, and Benjamin Netanyahu. And Israel has a deadline this week. Believe it or not, Israel has a deadline to pass the 2020 budget and by Tuesday night at midnight. And the government, according to Heretz, has not even begun legislating the budget. Um, and it's not looking favorable. Uh, there's, there is talk that the Lukid and Kahol Levan have been exploring ways to postpone this Tuesday deadline and to amend the coalition agreement that they had in place uh, for this coalition now. But I will tell you this, that it is not, it's not looking promising, right? It's not looking like there is a world solution to Israel's spiritual problem. It's not looking like there is a world solution even right now to America's spiritual problem. And as you can see, you know, you know, kind of shifting focus uh, on an election update, really things right now are kind of quiet. Uh, there's a lot of talk on the U.S. where a stimulus package uh, will be agreed upon shortly. At the time of this video, it's in, it's in, it's very close to to passing, and it would be a six hundred dollar uh, benefit for people this time in the stimulus package, as opposed to twelve hundred. But I will say this: that it's kind of almost just getting people's focus off of what's really happening in the world, and kind of distracting them with here you go. 
here's your, here you go. Uh, that's really kind of what it seems. Uh, we have much larger problems in this world um, as as far as the sin, as far as you know. There's there's no talk. There's more people that believe aliens exist than they do in Jesus Christ being the Son of God. That's a problem, right? Um, you know, aliens, as we've talked about, being the fallen angels, you know, that's a kind of a good segue. And the last topic I really want to mention today is today kind of entertainment. You know, I'm going to share that this is with the, the HuffPost.com as the, as the source. But I, I just kind of want to share with you that Katy Perry made a new music video, um, and it's kind of... It's known as a, you know, kind of like a cultural reset. It, it clearly states that it's not the end of the world. And you have a depiction of the rapture of the church to rapture Katy Perry. But it's not really Katy Perry that's raptured. It's actually someone else that, um, that it, it looks like her. And basically the aliens in the video that appear as aliens say that we saved you from Earth's destruction and there's a countdown going on in the video for Earth to destruct. Let me, let me just carefully explain something to you. As in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, so also shall coming shall be the Son of Man be. It shall be similarities. And one of the things that you'll find is that and you go back and you look in Genesis 6 and even uh, pre-flood, you, you, you start talking about where there's giants, where you actually have the offspring of the fallen angels impacting earth in which there's massive deception. People are looking at the deception coming and really trying to corrupt the bloodline. You know, back as in Noah, the same thing in Lot, the same thing that's going on today. And now to confuse the masses here in this video, there's the rapture that's depicted as the rapture, and then they unplug the internet from the world to kind of hide it. Hmm. Be kind of a great way to hide it, wouldn't it? Unplug everything. There's no communication with anyone except your neighbor that's still here, and everybody's trying to figure out what's going on. Hmm. To me, it seems like there's an entity somewhere that's trying to cause confusion and it's really trying to make it out like this isn't going to be so bad if you're left behind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you this. Being left behind will be the worst thing anybody's ever had to go through. Many people will not make it. Um, but I will tell you this, the best path is with Jesus. The best path is to reach the Lord through the rapture of the church and be with him forever with e and throughout eternity. So let me ask you this. If, if, if you're not saved today and you don't, you, you're like, I don't really know about this. That, you know, this all sounds just kind of crazy. I'm going to ask you to do something today. I'm going to ask you to take a, take a leap of faith. You know, whether you trust in your money or you trust in your resources or you trust that, that you know, your, your health and, and all this peace and security that you have here now is going to be great. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you that, especially during the time of the holidays, to take, to take some time and I ask you to do this. I ask you to, to get some alone time and pray to pray to God and, and and just simply ask God this. You know, maybe you've never trusted him, maybe you know he's real, or maybe you just kind of don't know, you know, but ask ask God this. Say, God, I ask you to reveal yourself to me. And being you, just ask him. He will. And just say, God, I ask you to reveal yourself to me. And I pray for your wisdom to know it's you. Ask him. Ask him. Because I promise you he'll speak to you. I promise you that, that he will reveal himself in ways that you never thought was possibly imaginable. I want you to take the time to think about your eternity today. 
Think about the time that you've spent chasing after this high, that high, that dream, whatever it may be, but you haven't found satisfaction yet. You haven't found what you're looking for, as we say here in Alabama. So I would encourage you today that if you haven't given your life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you need a Savior. Admit that you can't do it on your own. Admit that you can't get to heaven on your own. You know, God tells us clearly, it's not by our works. It's by the works of the cross. The completed works of the cross. Call upon his son, Jesus Christ. Believe on him as the son of God. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and for my sins. And that through his death, burial, and resurrection, we shall be with him in eternity. Say, God, I, I, I confess my sins to you. I, I, I'm taking full belief in my heart that you are who you say you are and the work has been completed. And ask God to come into your heart and reveal himself to you. But I would strongly encourage you this as well. Pray for his wisdom, no matter where you're at in your walk in life. Pray for his daily wisdom and that that wisdom shall be made known to you that is from him and him only. Then you don't have to search the stars. You don't have to search any skies or horoscopes or anything like that. You can search the Lord. And by the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you shall know it is God who is speaking, and God who is directing each and every aspect of your life. Well, thank you. If you've watched all the way through, I'd strongly encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to know more about current events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. Once again, I come back daily giving you the daily insight on what we have going on. Now, this is the week of Christmas, uh, real quick, and Christmas is here on the 25th, which will be Friday. So we will come back, and the plan is to have a broadcast tomorrow on Tuesday. And then we are going to take Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off. And then we will resume again the following Monday. Well, I hope you have found some value in today. It's truly my pleasure to be able to speak with you on these, word of work, on these current events in the world and how each and every aspect applies to biblical prophecy. Well, my time is up. I thank you for yours. Once again, this is Brother Wayne from Alabama, and Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. You have a great day.